really don't want to film right now because my neighbours are just out there so they can hear every single thing that I'm going to say. They're having a conversation right now, I don't know why, like... Hello everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel, my name is Beck. I slept at 10pm and I woke up at 3am and I couldn't go back to sleep, it is now the afternoon and I'm so tired. Moving on to the video games of this month. I played a lot of video games this month. I also spent a lot of money. I don't usually spend this much money to warrant a pickup video. I didn't just do one pickup video, I did two. Look at my collection. Oh look. Oh, it's a sneak peek. Oh. Why is it so hard to film today? I don't know. See, I sit here because I'm trying to cover up the, the mess behind me. And sometimes when I'm so tired editing the videos, um, I don't cover it enough and people can see the mess that's behind me. But yeah, it's just basically stuff that I'm trying to hide and the dog is barking again. Yeah. For the month of July, spent a lot of money. Uh, don't want to admit to that because I kept using my birthday as an excuse. Did two pickup videos, which I don't normally do. I'm not the type of person to spend, like to buy a couple of games all at one go. At most I'll buy one or two. Can't really justify buying like a bunch of games all at once because nobody has that kind of money. Maybe you do, but I don't. I should be saving, but I just couldn't. I just spent so much money this month that it's hurting me a little bit. You have no idea. I've been sitting here for like 20 minutes and I can't think straight. But anyway, let's get on to the games. Look at them. There's PS Vita games. There's Nintendo. Oh, let's put them in order. There's PS Vita games. There's um some Switch and some PS Balls. So let's go with the PS Vita, the smaller cases first of what I played this month. As you can see in my hands, I have four PS Vita games. If you've watched my pickup videos, yes, Yours Players 2 helped me get these games. And I actually gave all of them a go. Two of them, which are visual novels, um, Bad Apple Wolves and Call X Malice. This one I've wanted for a very long time. This one just so happened to be part of the 3 for 2 deal. This is like probably out of all the dating sins, I quite enjoy this one the most because for one, the protagonist of this story, not a doormat, she actually has a personality and the guys in there, I think out of all the storylines, let's flip to the back. The main guy was okay, um, I remember Angeline Marukuma on Instagram was, we had a conversation about this. Yeah, she didn't like the main guy, I can see why, he's a bit, it's a bit much sometimes, which is this dude. I think out of all of them, I enjoyed these two. Didn't particularly care for him. He was a bit too much and his storyline's a little bit crazy. I think out of all the visual novels, I actually like this one the most. I promised myself that I will not buy a single game in the month of August. Look, let's see how long I actually last, but I'm trying to save money, but it's not working. This one was the one that had a lot of mixed reviews. It wasn't that bad, but compared to this, obviously it cannot fare too well with it. It's an interesting concept, but I think sometimes in terms of the execution, it's a little bit weird. And instead of, you get to choose dialogues and you get to touch body parts in order to progress in the story. It sounds a little bit weird, don't really know how to explain it. Let's flip to the back with dudes. Um, I mean, between these two, I probably prefer this one over this, but this is not as bad as people give it out to be. I try to rip off the price tag, but there's some like residues left over. I try my best to clean it. This one is the best. But yeah, if you see these for cheap, be sure to pick it up. It's also easy plaque for trophies if anybody's interested. I plaque them both of them. Moving on, Hatsune Miku, Project Eva X, and Dagarampa, Goodbye Despair. I played like a good five hours of this. Whenever I hop on the train, I'll bring this out and I'll just play it on the way to work and on the way back home. It's okay. It's a typical Hatsune Miku game. There's a storyline on it. Not much I can say about it. I didn't really sell it here. I looked it up and it's not in my state. It's never available in Sydney for some reason. It's always available in South Australia or Western Australia and they won't ship it to me because certain pre-owned games you have to go to that particular store. So it got shipped all the way from America but it was like a 3 for 2 deal but he got it before the 3 for 2 deal from GameStop. I don't know. 
It's a decent game. There's so many unlockables with this game. I'm gonna get my money's worth out of this. I started playing this, got really confused because if you are familiar with the franchise for Danganronpa, you know this game isn't exactly um, friendly. So when I started playing this, because I haven't played, I've only ever played Danganronpa, the first Danganronpa game. I already know the gist of it. I never picked this up because it was so expensive. This is currently the same price as the third game which came out not too long ago like last year I think or early this year something around that time frame when I started playing this because I had finished the other two visual novels and I was on a visual novel kick and I wanted to I wanted to see how this storyline progresses and uh, yeah the beginning was a little bit weird because it was extremely happy and we all know that's not true and if you're familiar with this franchise you know how crazy things can get I've just finished the prologue that's all I know so please don't spoil it for me, but I can't say too much say much about it yet. Um, looking forward to it. But I need to like make progress in that because I'm a little bit preoccupied this month because um, a game just came out that I didn't intend to buy but ended up buying. But we'll move on to that later. So we have three Switch games. I'm gonna hide my shame. Um, Started playing Splatoon 2 again because of Sushi Fairy and Yours Players 2. I did join the Splatfest but I couldn't play it because it was during like peak time and I got kicked out and I didn't want to get banned again so I just gave up eventually. But I only played it for a day or two and then just gave up briefly for like a couple of days. And then moving on, I borrowed, borrowed this game from Robo Robin Nota on Instagram and on YouTube. I watched Alex's view in regards to lost and why you shouldn't buy it did a little google search and i kept spelling fear not this way because this is an american spelling and i got really thrown off and every single time i try to like look up this game i keep typing sphere in their australian way but that's besides the point you're not here to hear about that apparently it's like a little bit more controversial i don't know much about this game i didn't know it was like an rpg kind of deal so on the day that i met up with robo she had bought octopath traveler and i got so jealous from a distance when you play it it kind of looks like octopath so people thought i got octopath instead of lost me i don't know if anybody finds this story interesting i don't know why <laughs> um some people got offended by my joke but not everybody can afford octopath traveler on the day of its launch you know that right for some reason i couldn't get into this i tried my best um i made it past the prologue i think it's i made it past the prologue i'm up to the part where i have to find a wallet to progress in the story i find it to be very slow don't know why i'm trying my best to play it before i return the game back to robo as you might know a couple of days ago after seeing so many people play this game, this is up on my birthday, okay? I keep seeing everybody play it. I said I wasn't gonna buy it. I caved in, I got it. And I've been addicted to this for the last couple of days. And so have all of my friends. They're all playing it right now. Between these two, they're all by Square Enix. I just can't get into this for some reason, but this is incredibly addictive. Yours players too stream. I keep mentioning his name. If I subscribe to you, I watch I will support you all the way and I will watch all of your stuff, okay? I will support you as much as I can, but not financially because look at the amount of stuff I spend on, okay? But I will try my best to watch all of your videos if I'm subscribed to you. Trust me. If I don't leave a comment it doesn't mean I haven't watched it. I'm just a creep. If I could be on YouTube all the time, I'll be on YouTube all the time. It's funny because on his stream, he was like, Rebecca, don't pick it up. But it's actually really fun. But don't pick it up. So yeah, it has basically consumed my life. I've been playing this non-stop for the past three days. I'm currently beginning to start chapter three. Please do not spoil the game for me. But I would like to know if you have got this game, who is your main character? What level are you and what chapter are you on and so far who is your favorite character if you've been playing this game? I would like to know. I chose Primrose. I'm currently in chapter 3. I'm starting to struggle a lot more in the beginning chapter 2. I mean it was lengthy but it wasn't anything that I couldn't beat. I only died once which is amazing. It wasn't because of a boss battle. It's because I wandered off into an area which is like a cave and my team at that time was only about level 20 and I ventured into a level 40 cave. Obviously the first encounter I got, my entire party got wiped. 
Um, the second time that I almost died was when I was in the frost land and there was a stupid polar bear for some reason that did like one swipe and my team was on one HP but someone survived so I could heal everyone in time. This game isn't exactly the easiest RPG I've ever played but it's also not the hardest. It's somewhat similar. In terms of like the battle combat system is similar to Bravely Default where they have that brave system but it has its own unique twist to it. I started on the Furions chapter 3 boss fight no spoiler alert, don't worry that one was a struggle straight to me it took a long time for me to like beat that guy <laughs> like a good maybe 12 or 13 minutes to beat that boss fight I had to strategize a little bit more for that one surprisingly but i haven't done it with anybody else's so please don't tell me anything else other than the questions i've asked you please or else i'm gonna delete and block you <laughs> Awesome. Anyway, let's move on to the PS4 sections of the game. I'm losing my voice because I've been talking non-stop. Four PS4 games that I've been playing. Let's talk about this one. I was so borrowed this game of Robo. Um, I have 50 hours clocked into this game because as I'm playing Octopath, I'm also playing this. Oh, it supports remote play, so I might have a PS Vita here and then my Nintendo Switch as I'm playing like... Nino Kuni 2 and Octopath. Why not two RPGs in one go? I can do it. Up to the final chapter of Nino Kuni 2. Once again, please don't spoil anything for me. I'm currently just grinding because I'm only level 60 and I believe the boss is a little bit higher than that. I want to over level a little bit so the boss fight will be a lot easier for me for Nino Kuni. The main reason I put it on the PS4, is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Nio Kuni, but you can build your own kingdom for this. And I leave it on because I'm there to collect coffers and items and I can sell it back. It's based on real time, so I just leave it on as I'm playing Octopath. So whenever I finish like a chapter, I'll go check back and sell all the items of Nino Kuni. That's why I haven't finished the last chapter for this one yet. Because I just keep getting sidetracked by the so sidetracked in this game. Because there's so much to do. Um, in terms of the main storyline, don't particularly care for it. I understand where people are coming from when they said the first game was better than this. In terms of storyline. Especially when chapter 8 rolled around and I, I just rolled my eyes. Don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil anything, not gonna say too much about it. I just thought that it was very predictable because I felt like it just came out of nowhere and it didn't really flow well and it wasn't like, uh, but it was at the same time when it happened, I could already kind of predict what's going to happen in the end. But I'm not sure, there's like two possible endings I'm thinking in my head that could end in this game, but clearly you get to play post game so it has to be a happy one right i don't know i really need to finish the final chapter i'm just i like doing the side things in this game rather than the main thing one thing i don't like about this game is the skirmishes i find them really annoying but i need to level them up in order to earn a trophy i think most people don't really care for that part of the game it's all right but it's just not my cup of tea and moving on to the other three that I played for like a day or two but I didn't really like invest too much time into it. One is Horizon Zero Dawn. Installed it, opened it, played it. Only finished the prologue. Yeah, once again, I only finished the prologue. I need to finish Octopath and then I can like finally play my other games. Borrowed this game off another friend before and played it. But I just own my own copy now. Reason why I started playing this again, I finished this game six times. I was trying to get trophies with this. Didn't work out. And I was also inspired by the fact that I got Persona Dancing All Stars, I think. Three and five. That's why I started playing Persona 5 again because I was waiting for this to come in the mail. Ta-da! And I also have it here in the back. It turns out um, this box set does not come with a steel book. I think Solaris Japan, the website I bought it from, made a mistake. And that is why I got an extra steelbook because yours players here, I keep mentioning his name, I'm so sorry. Also bought it because of me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> A lot of people bought this game because of me. Yeah, it turns out nobody, they bought the same pack as me. I checked the link and everything, it was exactly what I got. Same price and everything. Nobody but me got the steelbook. So this was an added bonus. Um, I don't know if I should tell them, but I kind of don't want to turn it because of mine now. So I got a free steelbook out of the deal. Yes. I've only played five 
for like an hour. I haven't even like installed 3 yet. I don't even think I have enough space in my PS4. Cause yeah, I need to finish New Kuni. I'm probably gonna have to delete it because it's not even my copy. I can just return it back to Robo. And then I can install the other Persona games and play it. So this is what I've been playing for the month of July. Spent a lot of money. Didn't intend to. So I think I've rambled long enough and I'm about to lose my mind because I've been talking non-stop for 30 minutes or so now. Actually no. Wow, I've been talking for 50 minutes. But anyway, I'd like to know what games you guys have been playing. Are you going to make any more purchases in the near future? And if you have any comments or suggestions or anything, please leave it down below. Give me a like, subscribe if you enjoyed this mess of a video and um hit the bell if you want to get notifications from me i don't think it does much but you know what everything counts anyway if you've watched up to this point i don't know why you would do that to yourself but hey that's it for today i'll see you guys next time